Let me see if I can advance the screen here on my end. There we go. Um, we're looking at a screen that lays out an awful lot of information in uh, one place. It's uh, very <clears throat> tightly packed. The information is tightly packed on the screen. Um, so let me get right to it here. The idea that I want to introduce to everyone today is the concept of smart built cultures. Um, in the built industry today, we have a culture that is not working well. Um, I characterize our existing built industry culture as one that is fragmented, it's adversarial, and paranoid. And the reason that our culture is adversarial and fragmented and paranoid is because as lawyers, we have fragmented the industry and put everyone in separate silos. And we have created mechanisms for resolving disputes that are completely antagonistic. And we typically don't have useful um, mechanisms for coordinating and collaborating on projects. So what I'm going to talk to you about today are some of the processes that enable us to operate in what I describe as a smart built culture. And BIM, Building Information Modeling, and IPD, Integrated Project Delivery, are both really important component parts of a smart built culture. And you will see here on the screen, we've defined BIM to the X power, and we're talking about tools and technology there that enable us to virtually plan and virtually design facilities and infrastructure. Then we have the term IPD to the X. That is a mechanism that allows us to work together as integrated teams on major complex projects. And then finally in the middle we've got this concept of a smart to the X legal structure. <clears throat> so in this presentation I'm going to tie all of these concepts together for you. So let's jump on to the next slide. Here we're looking at the definition of a smart game changer. Smart game changers are simple and they're scalable. They fit existing systems but they easily expand to fit new larger systems. They're meaningful, that is they're purposefully adding value and solving problems. A smart game changer is actionable so it can be deployed in the real world now. Smart game changers are relational so they integrate disparate silos and they create new connections and they're transformational so they change the status quo and they disrupt stale processes so keep that definition of smart game changer in your mind as we move forward um, i would submit to you that film has been a smart game changer in the design and construction industry ipd is proving to be a smart game changer in the built industry. So let's jump on to the next slide. And here I've defined smart game changer a little bit differently. It, it's the same basic concept, but when I use these phrases built in parentheses to the X or smart to the X, what I'm talking about are conceptual frameworks within which we can analyze existing aspects of our built industry culture and smart concept of smart to the X is the same. So here I've taken you know a little bit of the prior definition but converted it over into 
the context of smart game changers in the built environment. So again, we're talking about smart, scalable solutions. That's what we want in a smart built culture in the built environment. We want meaningful and manageable metrics. One of the most important things about all of the things that we do in the built industry is that you have to measure things and measure things carefully. And if you're not measuring things, then you can't manage. So if you don't know what you have, you can't manage it. So meaningful, manageable metrics matter in a smart game changer to when you're talking about what would be a smart game changer in the built environment. Actionable, accurate, and accountable. Those are words you can assign to that A in the term smart game changer in the built environment. So what would we want there? We want to tie actionable to ideas. So we want ideas that are actionable. We want data that's accurate. And we want leaders who are accountable. So actionable, accurate, accountable ideas, data, and leaders in those would be part of a smart game changer in the built environment. Next, <clears throat> we want relational, repeatable, and reliable business models. If you're going to change things in the built industry and learn to operate in the coming knowledge economy, which is going to be transformational in itself and different than anything we've ever seen on the planet before, you're going to have to have relational business models. That is, you're going to have to be connected with your colleagues in the business world and in the economy in ways that we have not been in the past. But as always, it needs to be a repeatable process. So it needs to be something that works on more than one level, in more than one a scenario. And then, of course, a good business model has to be reliable. So this concept of re relational, relatable, repeatable, reliable business models is an important feature of a smart game changer in, in the built environment. And then finally, the concept of transformational legal frameworks that support BIM. That's something that we need more of in the built industry. In the built industry, we have a whole series of old school traditional contracts and an and old school traditional framework that isn't working very well. So we've got to improve upon that. So those are those are two different versions of smart game changers as I define them. One was a generic definition, the second one was more specific to the built industry. So we covered the concept of smart in some detail. Now let's turn our attention to the concept of built to the X. What does built to the X mean? Well, here's one definition of it. Buildings, and it could be infrastructure as well. Buildings built by BIM builders, where the BIM builders include planners, designers, owners, constructors, and users utilizing integrated procurement, planning, design, construction, delivery, operations, and maintenance systems in a lean environment that leverages lean thinking and lean process improvement concepts popularized by Toyota and doing so with technologies from today and tomorrow. So you can see that what I'm doing is I'm packing the term built to the X with a tremendous amount of information. And what I want to have happen in the built industry is for us to begin to think more exponentially when it comes to these terms and these ideas. So this concept of a smart built culture will have both the features of smart game changers that we've already discussed and exponential examples of this built to the X term that we've discussed here. Let's jump on to the next slide. Here again, I've modified the built concept and tied it back to several different presentations that I have 
that I deliver around the country here in the U.S. and I've been to Europe and to Canada and elsewhere talking about these concepts and here you can take this term built to the X and you can assign different values to the individual letters than I assigned in the prior slide. So here I talk about the fact that them to the X power is going to Googleize everything in the knowledge economy. And when I talk about the knowledge economy, I'm talking about this expansion of the information age that we're experiencing right now. If you jump back to the 1850s, you will have seen labor dedicated primarily to agricultural production. So over 90% of the labor force in 1850 was involved in the production of agricultural goods. By 1950, we had completely revolutionized that process. And in 1950, over 90% of the labor force was involved in the production of things. And by 2050, over 90% of our labor force will be involved in the manipulation of knowledge and information. And we will still be making food and we will still be making things. So this knowledge economy that's coming is very different than what we've done in the past and we need to be prepared to compete in it. And BIM to the X, which Googleizes information about infrastructure and buildings, another way to put it is that we're moving into an era of augmented reality where we have all the data associated with things available to us in a much more readily, read, easily accessible manner. So there's an entire presentation that goes along with that concept. Um, next is up the stupid tree. That's a parable that I tell a tale about uh, taking your subconscious on a trip up the stupid tree and letting your subconscious fall out of the stupid tree and hit every branch on the way to the ground. He falls in a boiling pot of change at the bottom of the tree and leaps out of it, but the rest of the frogs are still swimming in the warm pot of change because they don't even perceive it to be hot. Um, again, there's an entire presentation or even a three-day workshop associated with the concept of change in the built industry. Um, integrated BIM as the new standard of care. Uh, that's another entire presentation and series of workshops that you can delve into um, that deals with this concept of BIM to the X power becoming the new standard of care in the built industry. Uh, next, lean tools and processes in the built environment. And finally, technology today and tomorrow. So again, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm exploding the term built to the X and showing you how much information and how much opportunity to interact and collaborate there is built into this concept of creating for the industry a smart built culture. One that is not fragmented, not adversarial, not paranoid, but is instead collaborative, integrated, and uh, a trust-based uh, culture where we can do better work together as, as integrated teams. So let's jump on to uh, the next slide here. <clears throat> I've done the same thing with the term cultures and the S is replaced by the dollar sign. And if we jump, just jump to that bottom line, dollar sign is finance. So owners, lenders, insurers, surety, et cetera, all of those stakeholders need to be engaged substantively in this conversation with us about what it means to create a smart built culture and we need our lending instruments to support and enable this smart built culture we need our insurance policies and our insurance industry products to support and enable the smart built culture we need our bonding and sureties to fit easily within this concept of a smart built culture so i'm not going to go through all the other letters in the term culture but as you can see here on the screen I've got a whole range of ideas that 
relate to each of these aspects of culture. And you can explode these in a mind map and explore them in workshops and do a lot of good thinking as collaborative groups and as integrated teams about what our culture is and what we can do as an industry to improve our built industry culture. So let's jump on to the next slide here. <clears throat> I've taken the term IPD to the X and exploded that a little bit. In the traditional uh, arena, IPD usually just refers to integrated project delivery. And here I've expanded the term somewhat and it can be expanded much further than this. But when I talk about IPD to the X, I at least mean that we have integrated, innovative, informed individuals and teams who are planning, procuring, and producing projects as teams and designing, delivering decisions as integrated teams. So all of these concepts, again, it gives you a, an intellectual and analytical framework within which to begin to explore the concept of IPD. And it's, of course, important to have a legal instrument. Of course, it's important to have construction management involved. Of course, it's important to have the designers. But I want us to begin to think in terms of how do these moving parts fit together and support a smarter built culture and one that is not, as I've said, fragmented, adversarial, and paranoid. So let's jump on to the next slide. <clears throat> Here I've taken the term BEM and placed it in parentheses and we're going to multiply it to the X power and you can explode all of these terms. Buildings built by BEM builders and big business integrating information, innovation, and insights into models, metrics, management, and more. You can do this a thousand different ways. The bottom line, again, is that we're augmenting the reality of the built environment by leveraging these virtual planning and design tools. And the important thing from, an, from our perspective, I think, needs to be that we're not going to limit ourselves to just using them in one narrow aspect but to use it broadly in all the different phases of projects that we can. So don't be limited to just the design phase or just the building phase, but let's utilize them in the procurement and planning phase when we're programming. Let's utilize it in the operations and maintenance phase when we're uh, produce, when the facility is up and running. Let's jump ahead to the next term. This is another term that we saw on the first um, uh, screen. Well, maybe we didn't, can't remember whether we had this up on the first screen or not, but this CM to the X. CM in the built industry generally uh, refers to construction management, but here we're using that, tank, that term uh, in a more exponential manner. Um, we're using it to refer to not only construction management, but change management. Not only change management, but cultural management. Construction models, change models, cultural models, construction metrics. Again, as we've done with these other terms, you can explode this term and exponentially expand the, the, the scope and nature of the discussion. And again, this is all designed to help us think more uh, further outside the box with respect to what our smart built culture should look like. So let's jump ahead to the next slide. Um, I wanted to just quickly give you the uh, more traditional definition of IPD. Uh, this is a project centric definition and as I indicated with the term IPD to the X, it's my contention that IPD ought to be utilized at every phase of a project, but right now the industry, uh, to the extent it is even aware of what IPD is, 
it is utilized in a project centric manner on a specific project so it's so the traditional term is integrated project delivery. And what does that mean uh, as a practical matter? It means that there's early engagement of the key project stakeholders. It means that there are pain share, gain share uh, approaches to compensation and risk. It means that there's collaborative control of the project as a whole. It means that we have uh, implemented effective alternative dispute resolution processes that enable us to adjust our legal relationships uh, without resorting to a trip to court. Um, and finally, it means that we're collaboratively developing and validating targets and goals as an integrated team. So that's a sort of more traditional definition of IPD. And I think it's important you know, that, that you see both that and the more expanded version that I discussed earlier. Um, let me jump ahead a slide. Here, this slide helps you understand what's going on in the uh, traditional design, bid, build world. So you see the three yellow boxes there that designate the three phases of a project as we typically view them in the built industry so we normally have a design phase and then we put that design out for bid and then we have a building phase so that's the way most owners go about procuring planning design and construction services is to do so via what we call the design bid build process and that is largely accomplished by owners who utilize traditional contracts and so they'll sign an agreement with a design firm and the design firm will complete a design usually in 2d drawings and toss that over the wall and then the contractors will come look through those drawings and they'll submit bids based on those drawings and typically owners look for the low bid and the low bid uh, that's accepted will win the work and go on to build the facility. And you're all painfully familiar with many of the pitfalls associated with delivering a project in this way. And my contention is that this is part of the fragmentation of our industry. We fragment our industry and the various stakeholders. And you can see from the images on the slide that what happens is we essentially retreat to our respective bunkers as we do this work. And we don't communicate with others and we don't come out of our shell, so to speak, in order to do the work. And that's because we're paranoid, we're afraid that somebody else is gonna take advantage of us. And so we retreat to our bunker to do our work and that's a product of the legal instruments and the legal framework that we use so my contention is that we need a new and improved legal framework and this slide helps us sort of see where the broadly defined term IIPD to the X ought to fit uh, on uh, a arch structure that supports it and provides a solid foundation for it. And the blocks on the left-hand side of this arch ought to be carved using your virtual planning and design tools of all stripes. So your BIM to the X concepts come into play in the creation and carving of the blocks on the left-hand side. Your CM to the X tools and processes, so your construction management, cultural management because you want to manage the, the, the way the team approaches these things. Um, all of the uh, lean processes and tools fit into this side of the equation. These things are used to carve the blocks on the right hand side of this arch. And once you've completed the two sides of an arch, you invariably must insert a keystone that supports and enables 
each side of the arch. If you don't have a keystone, an arch collapses. And the keystone that supports and enables BIM on the one hand, and all of the CM, construction management, change management, cultural management processes on the other side, those are both supported and enabled by good legal agreement. Now in the single project setting, that can be a integrated agreement among the team members. But we need to be thinking in much broader terms if we want to bring about this smart built culture. And so we want you to think in terms of the <coughs> image that we're looking at now. I've got a series of presentations that deal with the concept of how BIM data gets collected. And what I advise my owner clients is that you want to uh, demand a digital asset at every stage of your project. So when the site selection committee goes out to find a site, demand that they deliver a digital asset as part of their report. And then when the environmental assessment is done on those sites, demand that you get a digital asset from the environmental assessment uh, group. Then when the civil engineer goes out and begins surveying and when the excavation company comes out and begins to put that civil infrastructure in place on your site, demand a digital asset. So if you think of BIM data as coming to you as a digital asset, you can treat it one of two ways. You can treat it like <clears throat> super secret sauce that you've got to keep protected. And so you might get a little teacup of information and you might put, put it in a coffee can and then you might take that, it might get too big for the coffee can and you might have to pour it over into a five gallon bucket. And that five gallon bucket might become begin to overflow and you might have to pour that five gallon bucket over into a 55 gallon drum and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and our problem in the built industry is that we keep putting our data in separate containers and once you get up to a 5,000 gallon tank in the built industry we may have hundreds if not thousands of little bottles of water floating in that big tank Okay, and they're all isolated from one, one another and separated. And that's not what we want. What we want is something more like this aqueduct we're looking at. We want the information to flow. Because the information that we're creating in the BIM environment, in this IPD to the X environment, that data ought to be treated as part of the data. And you can segregate it out, protect it, and it can be secure but you still want it to be part of the information flow that ultimately is available on the cloud and through the web. So instead of thinking in terms of collecting BIM data in these separate containers, as I described before, let's begin to think in terms of having the data flow from a small stream into a larger stream and into a larger stream and then into a small river, and then into a larger river, and ultimately into the ocean. And that ocean <laughs> of data is the web. Okay, we've got this internet, and we've got this enormous ocean of data out there. So I want you to think of the data that you're creating in the context of the built industry, the data that's flowing across an aqueduct and being put to beneficial use for the city or for the owner of the facility. So our data is not simply being placed in separate containers and it's not just flowing wild in the internet out there into the ocean for everybody to see and use. It's coming via an aqueduct and it's part of our, our information flow and we want to control that and we want to do so in the context of a smart built culture. So that is the uh, presentation.